Good morning and thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar, especially designed for eligible organizations. I am joined by Doug Elkins, who oversees federal surplus property, and Matt Harper, who is our warehouse supervisor and works closely with the state surplus property. We're gonna be going over an orientation to state and federal surplus property programs. We are recording this webinar, so if you have to step out or know somebody who will find this information useful, please feel free to share the recording of it. Our webinar this morning is expected to last one hour. We will be taking questions throughout the webinar, so please feel free to send those to me, the host, Jessica Chambers, or send those through and we'll get them answered throughout the webinar or at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our presentation over to Doug. Thank you. This is Doug Elkins, and I'm the assistant manager at the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, we're going to cover an orientation to the state and federal surplus property programs, and glad you're able to attend. And the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property is located at 2700 Charles Avenue in Dunbar. We're right across from Ben Franklin School. If you want to come in person, uh, you're welcome to do so. What is the uh, West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property, generally referred to as just surplus? Uh, our agency is responsible for disposing of state property no longer needed uh, by the owning state agency. Most of the state agencies will bring their property when it's retired to our facility in order for it to be resold. Um, we are a 100% self-funded entity our prices are based on fair market value. So when you visit our location, most of our items are, are based on the fair market value currently. Our facilities, um, uh, we facilitate the following programs. We have public sales, eligible organization programs, veteran owned small business programs, and the federal surplus program. We're going to get more in detail with these items as uh, we proceed, just so you're aware of what all we have. Now, with the state surplus property, uh, we probably want to know who can buy from us at our location at West Virginia Surplus. Primarily, we cater to the state agencies. They're pretty much aware of our facility when they do their retirements, and they can also, of course, purchase items from our warehouse. Uh, we're also um, eligible organizations can buy from our location. For example, if you're a county commission, county board of education, all the municipalities, parks and recreation commissions, any type of other nonprofits, church, fire departments, those types of operations. And we're also open to the general public. Now, the types of inventory when you come to visit us that you'll find is we have vehicles and we also have a vehicle sales list available on our website at wvsurplus.gov. And you're welcome to come and uh, view the vehicles. Uh, you can start them up, pull them up and back and, and view those and those are available. Uh, we also have office furniture. We have a variety of things such as chairs, desks, tables, filing cabinets, both lateral and vertical, and we have a uh, shelving also. Some of our office supplies that we have are, uh, we have printer ink, printer cartridges, staplers, uh, computer monitors, and just about any type of item that you can think of that you may need for your office uh, to operate, we generally have in stock. Now, some of the unique items that we have, we do on occasion, we'll carry tools and some commercial equipment uh, we do have paint on occasion. Uh, we have boats, hockey tables, uh, flower bulbs, primarily tulips, and uh, we also offer vending machines. And these vary whether or not they're in stock. You would have to verify with us on some of the other unique items, whether or not those are available at, at the current time. And when you're looking at our items that we have available, you can do like some price comparisons. Well, for example, with the lateral file cabinets that we have in stock, uh, Surplus will price these at basically $25 a drawer. For example, a four drawer file cabinet would be about $100. 
if you would go online or to the box stores, for example, like at Office Depot, the same file cabinet would cost you $644.99, which would bring a big savings to your area and office if, if you're in the market for that particular item. You can do um, a lot of cost savings and benefit to your organization by shopping at Surplus. Some other examples are uh, vertical file cabinets. Uh, we have a lot of these generally in stock available and we charge $10 per drawer and a four drawer, for example, would be a $40. And if, again, if you would go online to do any type of comparison or load a box store, for example, Office Depot would charge you $259.99 and generally the regular price is $279.99. So your big, big savings where you can get a, actually the four drawer file cabinet for only $40. It's a really big benefit to your organization. And they're in really good shape and welcome you to come down and check those out also. And if you're trying to like stock up for your office with chairs, uh, we have also available like stacking chairs that you could uh, use. Uh, at surplus, these are priced at $10 each. Uh, if you would go online, for example, or at Office Depot, the comparable price would be $76.99, and the regular price is around $149 to $150. So you're getting these chairs individually priced at $10 each, which is, which is a great savings. It's a great way to fill up your conference rooms or just have extra seating available as needed. So you're welcome to come down and check those out, of course. Also, on some of the um, rolling chairs we have available, uh, Surplus will have these generally at $10 each. These are really comfortable breathe chairs, great for use of, at your computer, uh, and they're really, really nice and in good condition. Uh, generally, a comparison would be like with Office Depot at $129.88 each which is quite a good savings for your organization. You can really benefit from shopping there. Some of the other comparisons is we have like just miscellaneous office supplies. You can see any type of thing. Um, generally, we have like five or five dollars. We have various items depending on you know, different types of racks and sorting uh, in box, out box, pencil holders, all these type of small little items that are quite expensive at a retail or box store that you would go to and shop. For example, we are only charging $5 for five items. Whereas if you would go to Office Depot individually, they would probably start at like $11.99 or higher. So you're really, really getting a very good bargain in just stocking up for your office supplies um, at West Virginia Surplus. It would be a great, great savings. And these are in excellent condition. Now, the benefits of an uh, eligible organization shopping uh, at West Virginia Surplus, you're given the first option to buy. This gives you priority over the general public. So as an eligible organization, you would be given that choice to walk into the warehouse and, and have that first option to buy any particular item. Uh, you can place items on hold for five business days that would give you time in order if you were, for example, county commission in order to get proper uh, approvals or signatures that are required or secure the financing that would be required through approvals of your agency. And you can pay and pick up later. This gives you an option to be more convenient for you so it'll, it'll work for you. And a really good, good thing is we have a 25% discount when purchasing three or more items. Now, that does exclude vehicles or um, any, any high ticket items like that, the vehicles, SUVs, any kind of car, of course. But on your general warehouse merchandise, there is 25% discount when you do purchase three or more of those items. And if you have certain things that you have in mind that you're really wanting to purchase, West Virginia Surplus can create a want list for you. And then we can contact you when those items are available and save you 
from actually shopping around, we can just, you know, once we uh, receive those items, we would notify you that we do have those available in our inventory. Um, you're also available or uh, for specials that are not available to the general public. Uh, we also have like furniture giveaways that you would qualify for. And it's a really, really good deal. Uh, these happen every so often, they'll, they'll run something like that or a particular special that's applicable only to you as a eligible organization that gives you the capability of taking advantage of that. And you can request uh, items also from an online auction, any type of auctions that we may have that, that you see an item, we could pull those for you. And that would give you first priority on those items also. So it's a really, really good benefit. You can really acquire a lot of good items and get really good deals and, and gives you the flexibility and convenience of shopping there. Some of examples of the state property that's been acquired. For example, the town of Fayetteville has acquired a truck. Obviously, they have um, got the snowplow attachment on the front and they've been able to um, modify that to work for them. So they've got their own snowplow. And uh, this has been extremely beneficial to them and has saved them a lot of money. They've been able to get like this uh, Dodge Ram pickup at a really good price, which allowed them to also secure pricing for the, any kind of attachment or uh, spreader that they need. And it's worked out really well for them. It's a, it's a really great, great thing for them to uh, have additional uh, snow plow servicing. Another example of some of the state property that has been acquired through the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property is uh, the Department of the Veterans Assistance. They've acquired uh, some office furniture. As you see, they have desk credenzas, a uh, really nice chair. They've really been able to like uh, furnish their offices at a very uh, reduced price with some very nice equipment. It looks really, really nice. It's in very good condition and, and it's a really, really good deal for them. Another organization that has benefited is an act community action. They've been able to punish their fleet with minivans and uh, sedan vehicles in order for them to have vehicles to to manipulate with their company and supply services. And it's worked out really well for them. They've gotten these vehicles at a very, very good price. And with the shortage currently of vehicles, it's really great to know that there are some available at West Virginia surplus. Also, the town of Clendenin has benefited. Of course, you know, everyone's probably familiar with the recent flooding there. They've been able to restock their offices with, of course, desks, chairs, uh, some of the computer equipment and so forth. It's been, a, been very beneficial. And these items, as you've seen in the cost comparison, have been very, very affordable for them. It saved them from buying uh, anything like from retail stores, et cetera, or online that would be much more expensive. It's been a very, very good benefit for them and also helping the local communities out at which we want to help all communities that we can. So just to make sure that you're aware that these type of items are available. Also a, a good feature we've had this year is uh, we have tulip bulbs available and these are available now and they're free to registered eligible organizations. And for the general public, these will be at uh, $5 per bag and a lot of different cities um, uh, and agencies have actually taken advantage of this. It's great for the beautification of their town and it's free for eligible organizations. And if you're just a general uh, public, um, you can walk in and also get them for just $5 a bag. You might wanna find out like what does West Virginia State surplus property have, or how do I would check on the inventory and what do you have in stock currently? There's multiple ways to find out. Uh, you can visit our warehouse uh, during normal business hours, and those hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Our regular operation hours for administrative is 8.15 to 4.15. 
but open for the general public or organizations. Again, our hours are nine to four. Uh, you can call the warehouse directly if you want to, to see if there's a certain item that you want to check on to see, uh, check on its availability. They're happy to wait on you or help you in any way they can or direct you if and when we may or may not have that item. Uh, you also can check online auctions. And as we've mentioned earlier, you can file a want list in a form of a written correspondence with us, and it actually will um, give you the opportunity for us to contact you once we've secured those items, and those would be available for resale to you. Now, we do have uh, online auctions. Primarily, it's govdeals.com, and there are listings from around the state. Those would be for example, at these, all these different locations would be a sale on site. They offer um, things to be sold from our warehouse in Dunbar, or if you go online, you can also see that these items are available at maybe a city closer to you if need be, and there's a lot of uh, sale on site items. And they do have a variety of items. On Gov Deals, it's, um, of course, national, um, Everyone nationally can, can log into it, and it's got everything on there you can think of from any type of item that you may need. And eligible organizations uh, can request uh, any of those items that are up for auction be removed and sold directly to you. And the GovDeals website is govdeals.gov, and it, it is, will list, and you can access this on our particular website at wvsurplus.gov there is a link to that site or you can go directly and it'll give you results for what's available at West Virginia Surplus in Dunbar and it also will give you the items that are on uh, site to be sold so it varies in location so be sure to check the location as you'll notice in this example You'll see a location for Dunbar and or Philippi, Elkins, et cetera. So it does vary whether it be an on-site sale or located at West Virginia Surplus. And once you find something, for example, that you may be interested in, for example, this 2004 Chevy boom truck, once you click on that item, it'll bring up the screen you see on the right, and it gives you detailed pictures, a description. It gives you when the auction ends, it gives you a date and time with the hours remaining. It also will display there is a buyer's premium of 12.5%, what the bid is, and what increment the bids are required to be made in. You'll have to go in on Gov Deals and do a profile originally to set yourself up. It just asks for, of course, your name, address, method of payment, etc. So this type and uh, a profile, once that is set up, then you're, you're eligible to, to bid on those items. And this is actually being sold through Gov Deals, and you will be making payment to them, not us, but you would be picking up the items at our locations. The next programs that we have are federal, and this is our federal surplus property. And there's actually two different types of programs under this. We have the fixed price program, which is basically only available to law enforcement agencies. These are fixed price vehicles that uh, local law enforcement agencies could use. And also our federal donation program. The federal surplus property, um, the West Virginia surplus is only agency authorized to obtain federal surplus property in West Virginia. Any type of federal property requests have to be made through the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property, where, where the go between for you as an eligible organization and the federal government. And property is made available to eligible state, county, municipal, and certain nonprofit organizations. 
the West Virginia surplus does charge a service fee, even though this is a donation program and these items are coming free from the federal government. We are required to cover administrative transportation and warehousing expenses that are actually invoiced back to you at a reduced rate, very, very low rate. Uh, to qualify as an eligible organization with us does not really guarantee that you will get these items or access to the federal property. The General Services Administration actually allocates these items and you will either be approved or denied through them. Our agency is making the request on your behalf in order to get that out there. And then we'll be notified from the GSA whether or not your item has been either approved or denied. And that way it'll be, if it's approved, of course, it's allocated to you at a small service fee cost. And basically who is uh, qualified to receive a federal donated property? Uh, public agencies, of course, different types of organizations like parks, recreation, local city, county, and state governments, airports, volunteer fire, rescue squads, all type of different agencies qualify for that. Any type of nonprofit organization, for example, higher education, school, colleges, or universities, uh, schools for persons with disabilities, educational institutions, child care centers, museums, libraries, places along those lines also. Uh, we're also uh, can receive a federal property is a uh, service educational activities, veteran service organizations, any 8A small businesses, veteran owned small businesses. And we're really pushing for everyone to participate with this. It's a really good benefit for you. So, you know, it's a really, really good, good program. Some examples of federal property that has been acquired. Um, some of the highlights is the Division of Natural Resources. They've been able to acquire a boat for $500. Now, they did spend $42,000 for upgrades, but this is a boat that meets the needs for them. And a brand new boat that they would have purchased would have cost them $100,000. And that particular boat is not produced anymore, so they really needed this one. And they've modified it to work for them, and it's it's really been a great benefit for them. And it's used basically to improve the fish habitats, and they're located up around Flatwoods, West Virginia, is where this is. And this particular acquisition was featured in the West Virginia um, Gazette Mail. It was a very very good uh, deal for them. They were actually looking for this type of boat in order to um, work with their fish habitat situation there and it proved to be invaluable for them and and the boat is no longer available in production so they've been able to buy this one and basically refurbish it in a condition that that's very very usable for them another good example is of the police vehicles this is on our federal fixed price program so any local municipalities or law enforcement agencies can purchase these those are the only people that can qualify on the fixed price program. Now, priority is given to the tax supported eligible organizations and different cities locally that have received some of the vehicles, the city of Dunbar, uh, Wheeling, Williamson, they've been able to take advantage of these and help stock up their fleet, especially with shortages now in vehicles. They've been able to acquire these vehicles and they do come with lights everything's ready to roll. So these are really, really good deals for the local law enforcement agencies. Another example of some federal property that's worked out real well is a recovery point. And they've acquired some mop handles, laundry detergent, brooms and toiletries, different clothing items and so forth that they can use at their facility. It's worked out really well for them. Uh, recovery point has five locations throughout West Virginia and 370 patient beds. They've utilized the state surplus property programs for years prior to this, but this has been a really good uh, thing for them in order to acquire these items that are really, really helpful. 
Another example of some of the items that federal property has been able to secure is they have converted a shipping container into a library pod for a children's facility. This was at Mount Laurel Learning Cooperative. This is located in Thomas, West Virginia. It um, facilitates um, a really good deal for them to actually have the kids be able to go from a shipping container over to a, a, a library pod. It's uh, 30 feet uh, and it provides much needed space for the library. Um, this was previously used at a research site in Tucker County and they've acquired that item through our surplus program, uh, the federal program at surplus, and then have converted it into a usable library uh, facility for their learning center. It works out really well for the kids and has worked out really well for the learning cooperative. Another wonderful example of some federal property we've recently acquired is a space shuttle model. And this was allocated to the McDowell County Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's a really, really great facility, uh, facility there. They have this located in a park. Now, this rocket has been on loan from uh, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. And um, it was first available to other agencies, but the McDowell County Convention and Visitors Bureau was able to get this item allocated to them uh, through the GSA. And um, it's a really, really great thing. And this is located in uh, Colwood, West Virginia. And if everybody may be familiar with the movie, The uh, Rocket Boy with Homer Hickman, Hickman excuse me. Uh, and that's, he's from there and uh, that's where it kind of originated from. And McDowell County is really trying to um, increase their visitors uh, and, and tourism in that particular area. And it's a great little uh, eye-catching item that's remained at this park in order to increase tourism uh, and money for them also. So it's really, really a great item that they have uh, been able to get allocated to them. And there's all kinds of items available in the federal property and the GSA website that, that we uh, want to make sure you're aware of and that you also could get access to. Uh, now, we do have a federal warehouse located in Dunbar. Uh, we are starting to get it um, stocked up and the inventory increased. Currently, we just have some items, for example, like table saws, hoses, so forth, but you're welcome, eligible organizations only are welcome to visit that site and see what we do have currently. And uh, we have a water tank available. And appointments are encouraged, not required, but we do encourage appointments. So that way we make sure that we have our staff available so you can tour our warehouse. Uh, if that appointment is made, it, it'd be a lot more smoother and you can see our items that we do have in stock currently. Now, screening for this federal property is uh, once you have filled out an eligible uh, application for eligibility and have been approved, uh, you can screen property at the gsaaccess.gov website. And once you have your application approved, we will issue you a unique user ID and a password that will come from us and GSA will send you a password. And then you'll in, you can enter your user ID as a login and there'll be some authentication process where you will text you a code number or email you a code number that allows you to get into the system. And you can shop around uh, for items that you may need. This will give you the ability to browse the system. And once you do have an item is allocated to you, there is a compliance uh, requirement with these items. They must be put into use within one year. And in some instances, it's 18 months or longer, depending on the acquisition cost. But you do have to have these items in service within one year, use it for at least a year, and then there will be compliance checks every six months for the 18-month period. Then once that compliance period is satisfied, 
that item is in your ownership and you can use it or dispose of it as you so desire. Now, the only thing prohibited is any kind of personal use of any type of property or uh, not using the items that, that is required. But you cannot purchase items on this federal site uh, for personal use. When you go into gsaxs.gov, there'll be a login screen, which is uh, this screen, and you'll click in, and it'll just ask you for your user ID and your password, and it'll there'll be some authentication process where you just type in a code number, which gives you access to the system. Once you get in, you can do searches. And you can do an advanced search or search by an exact name or phrase of the item, or you can search it by state location or by category. All kinds of different searches available to help uh, ease you into finding what you need. And on this particular page, it'll it'll this is by category. We have everything from aircraft, boats, office equipment, computers lab equipment so there's all kinds of different items available at this site and they'll have um, pictures available also which is the numbers you'll see beside these items you're requesting it'll have the number total number available and then the total number of items with pictures or you know, photos so you can actually visibly see what what the item is now when you find a particular item you want you can click on that and it'll bring up an item control number that you'll see kind of at the top uh, of the screen. And all you would have to do is send that item control number number to us requesting the item. And as I said earlier, all requests are made through the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property. Your organization cannot request it in GSA. It has to go through us. And you need to pay attention when you're looking at this particular item detail page, it has a screening ends date, and you're available to request that item up until that ending date. And it'll give you an item description and a price. Now this original acquisition cost is not what you pay. You pay a small percentage of that cost. That's just what it's it's listed on the GSA system at fair market value currently, but we, we do not charge that. And we charge small percentages as a service fee. And this way you can go in, see where it is, see where it's located, and please pay, pay special attention to the geographic region that these are in because you are required for pickup and you don't want to get anything that may be out of your area that is going to increase your transportation and or hauling costs or so is it with stays within reason so that way you can get something either in a neighboring state or in west virginia that will be cheaper as far as transportation costs are concerned um, now the federal surplus property for uh, pickup and purchases at the time of the donation or purchase, uh, authorized representatives are given a federal distribution document to sign. Now that is basically an invoice. And these documents list all the items procured by the eligible organization at the time of the property acquisition, of course, with a quantity. Uh, the or organizations are, of course, encouraged to retain a copy of this for their records. And uh, this distribution doc or invoice the payments must be made at the time of the donation uh, using an organizational check or credit card. Eligible organizations also must make arrangements to pick up and transport the property from the federal agency where it is located. And as we discussed earlier, you are responsible for pickup, so it's good when you're looking at those detail pages to see what geographic region these are located in so it doesn't increase your transportation costs. And West Virginia a surplus also must authorize the pickup in advance. We send letters of authorization to remove that item. So you're available to pick that up. And that will determine a date and time. So how do you become eligible for a state or federal property through the West Virginia State Agency for Surplus Property? 
you must complete an application for eligibility. And it's generally every three years, exception is volunteer fire departments, which are required to recertify each year. Um, you would have to also change or update your application if there's any change in your staffing or uh, administration. And you also need to, um, when you submit your application for eligibility, uh, include your financials, or if you're a certain type of organization that requires licensing or certification, to please include that with that application. On the application, the forms within that are basically just your contact information, the type or purpose of your organization, source of fundings, uh, types of property needed, all your authorized representatives, and you're also signing a non-discrimination assurance form. And as I said earlier, you would need to submit your application uh, with financials. And this, it'll be reviewed and approved as quickly as possible. Generally, it's done in a very quick turnover, a very quick time frame. Uh, so you can get out there and, and start browsing on the system once you're approved. <clears throat> Um, completing the application, excuse me, uh, those are available at our website at wvsurplus.gov. Uh, there's different types of applications for eligibility. Just the only uh, differences are one is for the public agencies and nonprofits. We have one that's geared for the veteran owned small businesses, and then we have one for volunteer fire departments. It's basically the same application, it's just geared to the different um, section. Uh, you can submit these in person or by mail, fax, or email. Uh, you can hand deliver it to us if you so desire at 2700 Charles Avenue in Dunbar, or you can fax it to us at 766-2631, or you can email it in, you can scan and email it to Matt Harper, it's matthew.e, dot harper at wv.gov and any questions that you may have regarding your application or the current status of that application feel free to call matt he'd be happy to help you with that and again his direct line is 304-356-2423 and we'd like for uh, you to connect with uh, surplus and you can go out on facebook and uh, we're out there also. It, we highlight uh, special offers, inventory, gov deal features, uh, items that we currently have for sale, and any information for any type of upcoming events that you may be interested in. Uh, we also can get you on a mailing list where you can receive inventory announcements, uh, news about these special events, hours that it's available, or I uh, really encourage you to check out our quarterly newsletter, which is really, really a good publication. And uh, it's called The Property Connection. And you're welcome to check out any of these or contact us for any type of help or questions that you may have. And you can contact us uh, at West Virginia Surplus at 304-766-2626 uh, or you're welcome to visit us in person at 2700 Charles Avenue in Dunbar, or you can contact me, I'm Doug Elkins at federal, with Federal Property, direct number 356-2428, or if you have any questions concerning state property or any type of uh, items that may be available in our inventory, you're welcome to contact Matt Harper. Again, his direct line is 356-2423, and we're all happy to help you in any way we can and try to get you signed up, your applications approved, so you can shop for state and federal property also. Um, we'll take any type of questions or comments you may have at this time. You're welcome to um, submit any type of questions. And uh, thank you very much for attending. No, not this time. Um, we are having issues with our radios. We have to have them wiped and cleaned and everything before we can sell them. And that was regarding radio equipment and whether or not we'll be getting that in. Okay, we got another question coming through. 
Um, membership fee. There is not a membership fee, only a cost to acquire items. Uh, someone's asking where we can see the inventory. You see it on Facebook at some times, or we have a website also at wbsurplus.gov. And if we get approved and then don't buy anything, how long are we active for? Uh, if you're a rev eligible organization, uh, public organizations, your uh, available uh, expiration is three years. For any volunteer fire department, your application is good for one year, needs, needs, needs recertified. But uh, your, if your application is approved, and you don't make a purchase, your application is still good for that three year period. I am not seeing any other questions. Doug, Matt, do you have anything you wanna add before we head off today? I just wanted to thank everyone for their attendance. And if we can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, wonderful. Thank you everybody for joining us. Please have a good day. We hope to hear from you soon.